The Chinese symbol for crisis also means opportunity because they don't have the kind of language discipline that we do. And I should know because I sailed west from Europe directly to India, the cradle of Chinese civilization, where I got to say konnichiwa for the first time to Indians. And we know they're called Indians because that's what I called them, right? That's a plate, that's a globe. Those are Indians, okay? And we all accept that, and that's fine. Now, I don't know what the Chinese symbol for mistake is, probably more stupid squiggly lines, <laughs> but I do know the Chinese and Viking and Polynesian reaction to a so-called mistake. They hit the, quote, wrong landmass, and got in their boats, turned them around, and went home. Because they used old world thinking. They didn't see the mistake of tunity right in front of them. And that's why there's no such thing as Leif Erikson Day. <laughs> I don't make mistakes anymore because I learned early on that every step an innovator takes is a win or a step towards a win. And if you say, that's not how life works, I say, look at my story. It wasn't easy starting out. In a groundbreaking disruption of traditional crowdfunding models, I asked Europe's richest monarchs to hand me ships and gold several times until they did. They did that because I asked. I, okay, me. Columbus. Now, let's say you, a professional sailor, pile into your relatively tiny ships and miscalculate the distance to what you wrongly think is Japan, even though people have been calculating the circumference of the Earth pretty well for centuries using sticks in the ground and shadows and math. And hey, yeah, maybe you're counting on gold and spices by the barrel full, and instead you arrive to find nothing but a chain of islands full of tomatoes and heathens. Let's say you realize Isabella is going to break your legs. So you try to make your money back by enslaving everyone. But everyone you try to enslave is a real dick about it. Some people would call these setbacks, mistakes, crimes against humanity, whatever that is. I call it my lesson to you. When plans need to change, don't. Double down on your fuck-ups without second thought or apology. People saying that you're not in Asia, insist that you are. Gold mining not working out for you? Branch out into gold taking, okay? Indians, uh, opting out of enslavement or insisting that they do, in fact, understand the concept of personal property, chop off people's hands. Cut off people's noses and hands unless they give you silver, right? It's this kind of outside-the-box oppression that put me where I am today, which is Boston? Are we in Boston? Phoenix! Feels like a Boston. We're in Phoenix! Whatever, call it Boston. The point is, there is no limit to the power of New World thinking. Example, let's say I brought a bunch of Indians back to Europe to show off, uh, and most of them died on the boat ride over, because that's true, I did that, that happened. Just say that you only meant to bring six in the first place. But don't forget the oldest tools, like data. Data showed me that my customers wanted New World sex slaves, and I heard them. Now, the humble startup that I thought would become little more than the world's first direct overseas trade route with the Orient is serving to fill that demand every day. Oh, and religious oppression. <laughs> that helps too. How could I forget? In closing, call me a dreamer, but I am just so thrilled when I look at our next generation of explorers. You know, 
as proud as I am of my admiralty, my viceroyship, the global fame that will one day warrant a three-day weekend celebrated in my honor for school children and government workers, but not the private sector, I'm even prouder of being a dad to my son, Diego Columbus. When I first arrived in China Indy America, working title, Diego was just a teenager. And I know people love to bag on the half millennials these days, but Diego has built on my work with the Indians, helping to found a triangular trade route that represents the world's first multinational process streamlining the transatlantic free labor market, insourcing African workers to unpaid intern opportunities here in the new world. The kid's such a go-getter, he's made my Indians obsolete. He's like smallpox, this kid. <laughs> Even as the new century dawns, the futuristic year, 1500, where's my jetpack, right? New world thinking does face some challenges. Just look at syphilis, a disease I am now credited with personally bringing back to Europe from the new world. Uh, I know, okay. That one was my B, guys. That's Columbus's B. But if we go around regretting our mistakes and cockworts, then we'll have to actually regret them. And that would suck. So let's not let other people tell us what's right and wrong or, or what growths on our genitals we do or don't want or what race of people we may or may not have been an integral part of wiping out. Am I right? Because the people who call these mistakes don't realize that it's the mistake makers who mismake history. Thank you. Thank you, yes. I'm one of history's greatest monsters. Celebrate me, yes. Thank you, Boston. You call it Columbus Town, though. Yeah, all right, USA. thank you. Good night, USA. thank you very much. USA, USA, USA. I know the way. How dare you, sir, I have your hands. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, I hope you share this with your friends and they share it with their friends and so on and so on. And we get a real virus of a content going. So please subscribe. And then click the like button if that's there or your current platform and time period's equivalent of a like button. It's a thumb up or like an A-OK -okay or just the word yes. Click that. And then in the comments, just let us know what you did today. However mundane, I promise you at least a person will be mildly interested.